I'll keep doubling, you keep bluffing, you've got nothing, I'll keep hustling. Yo, welcome everybody, Crypto EMC, another one, Bitcoin. Today we're going to talk about the Nomad hack. We've got special guest Damon from Charlie 3 here as well to actually explain the thing in his own words as well, answer a few questions and um, maybe look at a few possibilities or discuss a few potential possibilities. We're going to try and see if we can throw him under the bus. Um, and uh, also we're going to be looking at Bitcoin, we're going to be looking at Ethereum and a little bit of Solana. And uh, today we've got Neutral Colored Lee. How are you doing, my friend? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. Okay, well, let's bring in Damon because it's in the middle of the night for them. Uh, he just woke up to do the stream. So, uh, Damon, how are you doing, buddy? Hello, how are you guys? Yeah, <laughs> it's been a while. 30 a.m. for me. Sure, 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 sure. So, um, so that being said, it's like a, a normal working hour for you, basically. <laughs> Almost. Don't never sleep. Point, yeah, unfortunately. Well, buddy, the last time we had you here, we were looking at giving away Charlie 3, Charlie 3, yeah. Charlie 1. There was all happies and, and everything. And now we you're back again, but it's not under the same circumstances. No. Uh, Ever so slightly. So um, there's obviously a few worried people regarding the hack. Um, and it's not Charlie 3 or anything that you guys have done as of, as of such that, uh, you know, created this. But obviously you're the ones suffering at the moment because – uh, a lot of your liquidity has now been locked up in order to prevent the hacker from selling on and uh, capit and people cap um, capitalizing out of additional arbitrage opportunities. Am I correct? Uh, so, so none of our liquidity is uh, locked up, actually. It's kind of out there. But what's happened is that now we've, we've had to basically stop this bridging cap capability from people to go from the ERC-20 to the cardano native okay. token version cnt so that's kind of the, the problem we've had to come up with new versions of that and uh which we can go into details on whenever you want All right we can we can do that definitely i don't want to do it today you look tired but that's there's a video. there's a few questions <laughs> uh how does the current charlie 3 price because obviously what the hacker did is it, it it got a it got hold of a lot of charlie threes yeah and, so, uh, how does so, that yeah. impact it's uh right now i mean the biggest in practice it it looks like it's been super bad because it was on uh on the uniswap price on the erc20 side uh but where most of our liquidity is where most of the trading is where a lot of the holders are and where our utility lies is in cardano the cnt uh that price hasn't changed at all nothing none of that was affected uh so but the only thing that's being tracked on cmc or coin gecko is that uniswap price so it looks horrendous and and those tokens were all uh prior to this point they were meant to be permanently locked up so when people were migrating their tokens in this bridge uh they would input their erc20 tokens and get paid out the equivalent in cardano native token uh so that kept the supply correct uh but in this case the uh tokens were not permanently locked up because obviously they got hacked uh, on the Nomad Bridge. And so they were flooded back onto the market. They sold like crazy, just dumped all of it that was there uh, onto the Ethereum side. And it looked like the price went from 13 cents to 0 0.004 cents. I think it was a 98% drop within, I don't know, a minute. Uh, so it, it was a huge panic for, for a lot of people. But uh, the liquidity was super low on that end, uh, so it it looked horrendous. Uh, but uh, we took all of our uh, tokens away from there many, many months ago uh, already. It was only user-owned LP that was left. So, uh, yeah, the, the price is still the same on, on Cardano. Uh, but do not try and use the uh, LP or buy anything on, on Uniswap anymore. Uh, we no longer support that token whatsoever. And... It would be a shame if you if you tried, we're because we're not going to support you um, past this point, unfortunately. The, the the thing is, it's kind of necessary. It's, I won't say necessary evil, but it, there's a little bit of a silver lining around the cloud, because it's going to force the rest of us, me including, that's yeah. still holding all my charities. 
on the ERC20 network to finally, when you do give me a new bridge, to actually go and do something and bring it over. Because from an investor point of view, I just left it because it's, I know I have to do it, but I'm a man. I suck at admin. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so this is something that we kind of need to consider. So for everybody out, all is fine. The problem is lying. Uh, uh, and it's the same for Jiro, if I believe, as well, isn't it? Yeah, same thing for Jiro, same thing for Iagon and uh, Card Starter as well. Uh, but yeah, mainly it's us and Jiro and Iagon that, uh, that got hit the, the same. But yeah, it's okay. not a fault of our own. We weren't uh, affected on the Cardano side. And it was just the Nomad uh, guys that, that had that hack happen. Otherwise, we're, we're completely fine. There's no damage to the project is kind of my point. We weren't hit monetarily. We didn't lose any funds. It's really just a, a, the only thing we're losing is is time having to explain it to everybody. So that's at <laughs> least the, the, the best of the situation. So yeah, there's the no, to sleep. be clear, guys, there's no arbitrage opportunity here, right? That's true. Nah, no that more arbitrage opportunity. <laughs> so for the people that said, oh, look at that, a, a sub one cent Charlie 3, let's buy that up and make a ton of money on it. Uh, nope, there's no way to go off into Cardano from buying all these and then jumping over there and getting a 14 cent token and having a 20x or something that that won't happen so we'll have a snapshot that'll be have taken jiro's doing the exact same thing um jiro wallet for those of you guys that are listening uh so we'll have a snapshot of uh, all the token holders uh, prior to their wallets and exact amounts and when we open up a new solution later those people will be uh able to bridge their tokens over anything that happened after the hack will not be uh guaranteed at ever at all so the okay. so the reality is anybody that thought that he was buying a bargain of a lifetime uh, yeah. in that instance he needs to either sell it off to a, a, another sad soul or take the punishment in in that regard yeah it's, it's, it's no way that you can actually you know there's no way there's no one solution that solves it for everybody i, I would imagine no, this was the the lesser of three choices basically it was either don't uh don't let anybody ever bridge over anymore and just shut it all down, which isn't fair. Uh, or do all of it, right? Uh, honor all of the ERC 20s, which is also not fair because now all of these new ones got dumped onto the market uh, that were supposed to be out of supply. So that would completely change our, our max supply and, and devalue the token for forever. And that's not fair, especially to people like you who are early investors. Uh, so the, the best option uh, was just take it for for uh, where the hack it was and then just go, that's it. There's always going to be angry people, but we think that this was the, the best uh, solution for, for the community and the projects and, and everything. So um, time frame, do you guys have a realistic time horizon estimate? For when oh, we man. will have a bridge? Yeah, we wish we could do that. I mean, obviously, this just happened yesterday. It's been pretty, pretty whirlwind. It's hard to come up with a solution uh, that fast. I mean, these bridges took many months prior to. Um, some people say, oh, go use the Singularity Net Bridge. That one's open. But Singularity won't let other people use that bridge uh, because of... Uh, legal liability reasons for, for taking on other people's tokens. So for us, it'll be a manual situation where people probably just input their, uh, their wallets and. Okay. So the internet well, is dropping off like, again. Like Demon said, it has to be a manual process, maybe a website and we have to put, you know, um, I mean, you have to put the new Cardano network address, and then they will send the tokens through or something like this. I yes, so I think, yeah, so I guess it's not as bad. Let's see, Damon's back. I didn't want to keep your face on because it looked like you were you were pulling faces at us. So I thought oh, I'd just quickly remove no, not, not pulling faces. Uh, the, the question was about timeline of having a bridge. Uh, we're really, really focused on the product right now, the Vasil hard fork for Cardano, which really enables yeah. DeFi and enables us to come up is right around the corner. Um, and we're very, very close to having a, a, a working product out on mainnet. Testnet wise, it's there. Uh, we're already doing it. So that's kind of a alpha first. I haven't said that to anyone yet. Um, so 
so that's the huge focus because Cardano DeFi and uh, is is really reliant on us going live as an oracle uh, for them to to focus. So we're really focused on that, and then we'll deal with the bridge later. I'm fine. No, we're, with that. We're, we're, we're talking about this <laughs> this manual process. Um, are you going to have a new bridge, or you're going to you're going to more go for this uh, manual process where we have to put the wallet address and then. Yeah, it'll be a manual thing where you'll put you in your wallet address. We'll have the snapshot. We're going to have to do each person individually. Uh, it's going to be a lot of manual painstaking labor, but uh, it's the only way that we know that we can do this properly and keep it safe and not have to rely on another solution to, to get it done for us. That makes sense. Damon, I don't think we need to take any more of your time, buddy. Thanks a lot for, <laughs> for, for waking up in the middle of the night. Go get some rest. Uh, now just you have it. You one more, it from him. Oh, one, one more question, question from, sure, from yeah, our here. community. Any info on C3 staking? Is he asking? Uh, staking. Oh, so C3 staking uh, will be coming up probably in about a month or so. Uh, the platform we've been talking to. It, this will be with the cuties that we gave away last time. Yeah. Um, so, um, that will be uh, with a platform called Mutant DAO. Uh, so that'll be pretty sweet. Again, I haven't said that name yet, so you're getting all the alpha here. And the other thing we've been talking about in our community since last time is actually using those cuties as well for delegation staking to the node operators. So once we get up and running and the systems are all good, we'll have uh, delegation staking. So the regular person like yourself can stake some of your uh, C3, a limited amount uh, to the node yeah. operators and get uh, the rewards from the nodes. Limited amount. How much are you going to limit us by? Do you have that? <laughs> well, we'll see because we, we can't have one person come in and, and own the whole node and then the node operator doesn't get paid. As it much, doesn't you know? So we're, we're still working out the details on the math on how much you can have. But the idea that I've got is basically any uh, cuties holders will have um, the ability to stake more than other people and gain more rewards than a regular person. So that's the that's the benefit of having the, the NFTs. Okay, well, there you have it, guys. So those that got the NFTs, hold on to them, I would yeah. imagine. Um, Damon, I see a comment here, buddy, before we leave. And this is from Yuri. Damon looks more awake than Lee and Rudo. Buddy, hey. we need to start <laughs> slapping our faces before we go live or something. Because uh, uh, well done, Dam Damon. You, you pulled it off there. We, we yeah, did that no, last no. time. I remember I woke up at 4 a.m. and you were, we were slapping ourselves <laughs> to get up. <laughs> So, uh, Damon, thanks a lot for taking the time, buddy. I really appreciate it. Um, I want to just share this with you guys before Damon leaves. Uh, do yourself a favor. All this information was brought, was written up beautifully on their Medium page. Go over to their Medium page and actually go read through it if you're a, a, a C3 holder and give them a follow while you're at it. Um, you know, it's your investment. At the end of the day, it's your responsibility to kind of keep tabs of what is happening there. And from our side, we'll do our best to uh, bring the information to you straight from the source. Damon, thanks, thanks, for, thanks for joining us, buddy. You have a lovely day and, well, a lovely rest. And uh, we'll speak to you soon. Perfect. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye. I look forward to seeing the rest of you in the community. Just, thanks, buddy, man. take care. Right, Oli. So nothing to worry. Um, our investment's still okay. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin, 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 Bitcoin. I think everybody else wants to talk about Bitcoin. Let's quickly have a look here. Uh, let's look at the comments. Sad news on the hack. Yes, it's really sad on the hack. One thing just to 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 keep in mind, guys, with with things like this, uh, with these third party. Oh, let's let's leave it at that. It is sad for the hack at the end of the day, but it brings out inefficiencies. And in the end of the day, big picture, it's actually good for the uh, the whole crypto community because we, we're going to live in a world where bridges are going to have to be there and it's always going to need to be there. So if they can solve this now and figure out how to get, get it so that we don't get hacked, so we don't get exploited, um, in the end of the day, it's going to lead up to a bigger, better crypto for everybody. Uh, Lee, we're going to talk about Bitcoin. We're going to talk about Ethereum. I want to show you guys this Dixie chart. Um, so there's a lot that we need to get through. And uh, from your end, please share your screen. Let's have a look at what you've got prepared for us. 
Lee's supposed to share his screen. Oh, there it's popping up. Let's have a look. Well, same, same old Bitcoin charts. Same old Bitcoin chart. Okay, and then before we do that same old Bitcoin chart, we also have a few alts we want to talk uh, about. So um, Solana, glad my Solana is hitting. And there was something that happened with Solana as well, but okay, we, we're going we're gonna to just move this back to technical analysis for a bit. So I want to just recap this BTC area. This was the the week the monthly candle set that we were looking at. And we explained to you guys that there's absolutely you still have my screen share there. Yeah. yeah, I've got it going there, buddy. Um, thanks. So we were looking at BTC, and I explained to you guys that from a monthly point of view, there is no reason to be bullish. And when we move over to a weekly, what we do find is we've got a little bit of a lower in hope, hope point, invalidation for, for people to remain biased. On the bearish side and bitcoin is still trying to get to those levels but now the difference is for ethereum if we have a look at the same eth layout i want to point this out so this is ethereum on the weekly there's absolutely nothing pointing to a higher high or anything so for ethereum we kind of need to either have the relief rally now where price goes somewhere in order for us to move into this long lateral consolidation or we need to go make a lower low so that that line like we did with bitcoin from the monthly can move down to this area over here and then this brings the question lee how are you feeling about bitcoin is uh, uh bitcoin at the moment do you think we're going to go and try and get that 28k <laughs> Difficult. I mean, Bitcoin has not moved much since last week uh, or beginning of the week, at least. So, like I said, I mean, for me, nothing has changed since yesterday. The 30th June high, it's really important. Marks, it kind of marked like a pivot point. Buyers are still trying to make another higher high above that high. Um, I have to wait and see, you know, if they manage to go up today, tomorrow, because the longer, I feel like the longer they spend time in this kind of area here, uh, th they're going to lose some, some momentum at the end of the day, especially if you look at this uh, one hour chart. Okay. This chart looks nice. We have, you know, we're trying to make a higher high here. We just went a few dollars above that higher lows. Uh, but what worries me is like if, if we trend like this with small momentum up on term, in terms of price action, RSI is going to just shoot up much faster than the price. So we're going to have like more bearish divergence printing out, hidden bearish divergence on RSI faster than the price. And that, you know, when, when something like this happened, then the, the sellers and the bears were, uh, would take the opportunity to, to use those hidden bearish divergence and try to push the price down again. Um, yeah, clock is ticking. Um, if there is no bias, no no one wants to push that price higher than this weekly high at $24,695. Um, bear in mind that we are still waiting for the price actually to retrace back to this, to this range at $21,9, $21,7. So we can, you know, um, long this, this area with the stop just below the previous structure. So at the moment, today, the structure is looking nice. If we can hold the previously low and we have opportunity to go higher, but you know, all depends. I mean, the crucial time, the crucial moment will be around 23.6 area, I guess, 23.6, 23.7. If we can pass that area, then we have hope to see another higher high going above 24.7. If we can't pass 23.7, 23.6, that would be a, a nice area to, to lock a short as well. If you are a seller, if you are bearish, that would be another area to, you know, to launch maybe, yeah. To, I actually sell have, the market uh, to short it. I have something uh, of similar for, for ETH marked up for short, but before we go into this, Lee, I actually, it's time that we pull down our pants again. It's a week later and show you what we've got. So we constantly ask you guys to support the channel, sign up with our link, uh, you know, go over to the Discord, you know, this is the link for the Discord. And the argument is that, um, you know, join the premium group of trade with us. And um, 
And that's all good and dandy, but any good trader and any trader worth its salt will always share and show his PL. Now, although we were a, a, a team, it was really hard to just each and every one open their, their respective trading accounts um, because the results will differ. Uh, so what we did is we obviously looked at a, a platform that will give us the, the joint uh, performance of the trades that was called that gets um, indexed. And we do share that as well in the Discord. But now I want to bring it open and I want to actually explain everything for you guys on, on, on the stream. So this is the this is the trade group and how it's been performing. So what you have over here, the top left hand side, is the different trade strategies. So I've got strat 11, which is an aggressive scalping strategy, then strat 2, which is a more conservative day-to-day uh, scalp strategy and strat 2b which has got a different take profit strategy to strat 2a and then obviously strat 3 which is a, a longer term swing strategy and then what we have is all the different uh, all the different portfolios that bring those strategies through to you guys so you guys can actually go and check this as well if, should you want to and what I've done is I've also used just the last month of, uh, of dates. So a simpler way to just show you guys, go into the last 30 days and it picks those days. Now, what it does is it, it goes and picks up all the trades on all the strategies as they were as they were shared with you guys. And then it calculates the average return percentage. So and then it factors that percentage through the amount of days, which means for the 30 days, if you took each and every trade with the winners, with the losers, and you can see that some of them are losers. There's 95 trades out of them. There's a lot of them. If you take each and every one of those trades, I mean, this is only what's loaded now. It will probably pop up showing more. Um, let's, let's just get back there. Um, so all those trades, I don't know why it's not loading more now today, but I mean, all those trades, you would have an average daily gain of 0.98%. And this just points out to the probabilities and how these things work. So, and I think the important thing is with this figure that I just want to point out, Lee, when we look at this figure, does this mean that you would have made that much money this month, compounded your portfolio with 1% a day for the, the 20 working days or uh, we must like try this thing. I don't think it's compounded. Um, it's just, so basically it's just it's not compounded, but it's accumulated. If you look at accumulated yes. return in terms of US dollars, um, if you have taken it every single trade with one hundred dollars at the beginning, you know the starting capital or starting position hundred dollars, with or without leverage according to the to the stop loss percentage, um, that will be your accumulated um, rewards. So you end up with $162 if you had $100 to start with every single trade. Yeah. That's correct. So it gives you an idea. Now, the reality is if we nitpick and we want to exclude ourselves from certain trades, yours will differ because if you maybe traded more aggressively on the days where there was losers, I don't know why it's not going. Is this 95? I think this is 95, yeah, then it's 95. Mm, they're all here for the for last month. So what we can do is we can also filter them. We can say, well, let's have a look at the most aggressive strategy. So you just want to scalp and we just want to look at the strategy that you shared with us in the recent days. If we have a look at that one, it then filters that and gives you all those trades. So now what we have, Lee, is we've got a 0.47% on this one, but with an 80% win rate. Means that some of them were more conservative just explain to me what happened there. Look, I don't know what does that 0.47 average return percentage is. Um, the win rate is 80%. So I don't understand why the average return is 0.47. I, I will ask the guy from Traders. But this is daily return. Mm, I don't know. Look, <laughs> what, is, what is important to me when I look at these stats, what I want to know okay is because of this setup this strategy and the way that i'm using trader sync is first i look at the win rate okay how many trades i'm winning out of 10 out of 100 80 percent so eight wins two losses on average 
um, a community return in US dollars, hundreds. Yeah, that's nice, but you know, it, it all it's different from every single people as, as well. But what I had was the um, average winning hold time. So it tells me that, you know what, if you are in a winning trade, it should, we should close it within these 12, 13 hours. So there's no way that this strategy is going to carry on the next day or two days later. So that's a nice cap strategy for me because, you know, every time if I win a trade, it has to happen within these 13 hours. Otherwise, just kill it. Because if you are if you are taking a position, you didn't hit your TP or whatever you wanted after, you know, 12, 13, 14 after a day, then you should you should get worried about this, and it doesn't show you here, but um, I add it also, yeah, weekly. Which day must I trade and which day must I not trade? So give me that every single time I'm using this strategy on Sunday and on Monday, I'm losing it. Tuesday, Wednesday, and surprisingly, you know, Thursday is one of the best day to use a strategy. Um, so this this kind of stat is important for me as a trader. I know that you know what between. Sunday and Monday, I'm not touching the chart. I'm not using that strategy because every time I do that, most of the time I'm losing it. Um, timing, which which time of the of the day I must use that. Um, if you look, if you scroll out, scroll up a little bit, it says in time eleven o'clock. I don't know how many trades I've have, I have started at eleven o'clock, but that is not the right time to do it. You know, big institutions are going to for for lunch or you know you um, London market. Um, lunchtime or something like this. So 11 o'clock is something that I need to avoid. Um, same as 6 to six to 8 p.m. I need to avoid trading in this kind of area. So we can refine the strategy. We can, you know, dive into a little bit of, you know, this kind of numbers and see how we can improve it. Well, there you have it, guys. Um, that's the pulling down our pants for a bit. Now you've got an idea of how it works. Um, and uh, those details also gets posted through to the Discord. Lee, I'm going to bring back your screen. Let's talk Bitcoin short term. I want to see what is the potential for uh, a trade or a scalp trade because at the moment the market does look um, a little bit neither here nor there. Yeah, you know well, the the biggest scalp, or I would use most probably as a swing trade with this localization between 21.9 and 21.7. Um, I would love to see price retracing going back to this area and then, you know, um, try along, see what, see within this area in a smaller time frame if the price is reacting, forming this kind of you know, pattern. Uh, if the price goes up, which I believe they still have some legs to go to the upside, I think that this area here at 23,700 and 23,675, 600, there is a nice gap here where price might hit resistance, and that would be the area for me if you wanna, you know, try to uh, try to to short the market, try to short Bitcoin. That would be this area. So that would be exactly, not exactly, more or less the move that I'm. That I I wanna see going back down like this and then maybe from there going try to make a higher high on a later stage well if that if it's if it's gonna happen exactly like this you know i don't know uh, but if i have to trade i will definitely wait for this kind of price action obviously with with stop losses for if, if i'm shorting this i'm gonna put my stop loss at the previous weekly high and if i'm long with this i'm gonna put the stop loss here so Short term, this is what I'm expecting. Okay, cool. Thanks, buddy. Um, I'm going to bring up my chart. We're going to quickly have a look at expectation management. So what I want to share with you guys with Bitcoin, when we looked at this um, on Friday, the point and figure chart, we, we're slowly but surely creeping above this 45 angle. We are lateral ranging now. So you can remember when we were here and we looked at this chart the last time around, you can see how these these little bubbles and crosses or dots and crosses, they change due to the volatility. And there's a certain condition that needs to happen for that cross to get locked in. That's why I say this is not a live trading chart. You can't trade from this chart. But what it's showing us now is that demand is kicking in and we are surely but slowly but surely 
breaking the bearish trend. That's why we still get to want to go long. Doesn't mean that we can't have another shakeup, but it's definitely pointing to, to the possibility. Now, one thing I want to share with you guys is when we looked at Bitcoin a while back, I explained to you guys that these supply and demand levels um, that we've drawn out is going to be the pivotal point where we're going to have support resistance um, in, in, in an angular way. That's how the trend is going to move. It's the, kind of the, like the DNA of the market. And we had these levels as possible targets if we start stepping up. Now, this was the one that we looked originally. Now, it's the same chart, just depends on which lines you move them towards. You can use them around pivots. You can create your own your own narrative in that in that regard. But what it is doing is at this stage, when we looked at this target, we looked at about a 28K. So the argument is move up to 28K and then maybe whatever we would want it to be. Um, looking at that, looking at this now, I'm, I'm feeling to the situation that the trades that I'm going to be taking is going to be limited TPs towards these levels over here. I'm going to be looking at this chart and I'm going to be considering TPing on these levels, not trying to get there anymore because you can clearly see that we have lost momentum. We are fighting, but we have lost momentum. So that's just going to be my game plan. So I'm going to be more aggressive taking profit around these levels and leave less of my position to run to try and see if we can get higher points. Because as time shifts up, the possibility of us breaking this, this line is so high or the probability is so low that we'll break that line when we get there and the target is moving down. It means that I have the ability to actually say, well, let's, let's be more conservative, take the gains that's there and then if we do, we can always come back and test like we did this. There's always a test within these waves. And then I can probably buy back and see if I can trade up to the rest of it. Um, one thing that I just want to, want to bring a quick update to Rune. This was the Rune setup we explained to you guys. I'm really bullish on this one because of the momentum. Smaller time frame. Has not triggered just yet. I would still want to wait for that trigger. But just take note of, of this one because I think that there's still going to be a lot happening there. Now, here's the Solana one. I just want to have a, have a look at this. Now, Solana had a little bit of a mishap, and um, sometimes that's the excuse. That's the uh, that's what we need to get price back down. So Solana finally went into this area, and this was the pivotal point where I would want it to grab it. Now, you know, time is always never on our side, but I just want to bring this out to you guys. Although we, we it went to the target and it's filled, what I would do is I'll actually look at Solana. I will move it over into a smaller time frame to try and see what is cooking there. So if I move this over onto an hourly, you can see that we had a big engulfing structure there. So what I would do, this is me, I'll just wait for us to get above this area and actually take out those highs there. If we can do that, wherever we bounce and fall, which would probably be back at the 39 cents area, would be the area where I'm going to want to try and take Solana and trade it to the upside. So for now, this is really good. We are respecting these demand levels beautifully. Uh, but on the one hour, that's going to be the play that I'm going to have to wait for. I'm just going to give it a little bit of room, and let it go up, and then come back down and then grab it from that point. Knowing that on the bigger time frame, I've got a lot that's against me. I don't need to be in a hurry with this one. Um, Lee, do you have anything on Solana? You've got a daily setup that's playing out, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the you know the Bitcoin chart that I want to see Bitcoin price um, action ha acting that way and this way is also never you know the the only thing I'm looking when I'm taking a decision to to enter a trade. So based on the same setup that you've seen now on Traders Think, 80% success rate, there's little, there's a lot of conditions that needs to happen at the same time so we can decide on that. Um, so based on that, I did the same on Solana and yeah, four days ago we were you know, bearish with a stop here at the, at the level of 47. Price went and while you went to your entry, Rudo, that was a TP1 for this short. Um, so far, I haven't seen any convincing momentum change so if i'm in the short here i will still you know hold this position maybe for tp2 and tp3 until unless or until or unless um, I've, I've seen something else that uh, that can tell me that you know what cut your short and then we flip long 
but so far i mean as we speak right now today there's nothing that tells me that you know, momentum has changed so still holding on a, on a short that if if you have even sold solana here and then even bought it bought it back at your entry that will be already a 10 percent farming so i'm recounting on that one to to capitalize on also on those um holes like solana rune uh, on the daily chart for the next one imagine if you can you know sell not at the top but more or less where those those momentum change happen then we could actually farm a lot of coin for the next one that's true you can get a lot of coins that way and and that's important thing that's what the relief rally does actually you, it, it allows you say this is as good as it gets for now um but the idea is you need to take anything you're drowning in you need or you're under you need to start utilizing sell some of it you don't need to sell all of it if, if that's the the goal but then you know at some stage a, a, a low from a big decline like we had here any any low from a big decline like this will be get will get tested the 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 probability of this being a b reversal and we're back on bull market is so low that it's almost not worth it's it's not worth taking the risk on so the more sensible point is to say that use this because you can double your holdings although you're still down on dollar but if you've got double the amount of coins it means if this was the level that you were at break even if you double your coins you actually halve the price 43 turns to 20 what are you, 43 21 and a half doesn't make sense that much because but no, 43, that's the, that's no, <laughs> between 43 and 20 your average will be 30. yeah yeah you, thank you it's just my my maths let me down there for a bit but that brings down your your average price just by doing the farming so which means that you're still going to be down on dollars but by the time the price gets there would have the same impact in your wallet as what you had when price was there that's the that's the key to it which means that you know there's so many strategies we don't need to have everything play out 100 percent to, to what we would want to expect to play out to uh okay lee op look at this thing you want to short it look at that rsi mm -hmm. do you want to short it well not yet but rsi is surely but uh, you know um if op makes a higher high and rsi is hitting this kind of level then there's a strong bearish divergence to to short so the short is coming it's not there yet so what lee's pointing to out is we're sitting in a situation where the the distance i'm just going to measure it, it's like 12 percent off the current high we're sitting in a situation where that is the case but the rsi sitting at 60 percent needs to go above 90 to, to even just try and make a, a higher high to delete the the strong bearish divergence that will occur if we make a higher high. So with this one, remember we're not emotionally or financially invested in this pro in this coin. I just want to trade it. There's a lot of volatility there, so it, it's a good trading coin. If we get a nice trade, you can have a good run like this. The argument is if we get this. That RSI will probably be sitting at the situation where we're making a lower low, which is going to give us this, this and this. And we all know what that means. It's going to give us a strong bearish divergence. And that would probably be a good area because what you then do is look at the structure that forms there and we'll probably be able to use the gone zones because they are quite accurate for this. Look at the structure and once we leave this leave the 618 level have a good short to come back down to this area to probably still be bullish so that is something that i'm looking at for um so i'm going to be keeping my eyes on op i think that there might be something there and then we looked at ship lee ship is still banging its head against this um against this resistance it's just reinforcing the reality that we need to be a little bit more patient would you say mm. Short term, everything looks bullish because Bitcoin is now, you know, why well, it, it is at exactly at the level we wanted to see Bitcoin at. So let's see, you know. I mean, I, I, I wish 
if I have to trade, will I will I short right now SHIB or BTC? And, and I, I don't. I, I just look at Bitcoin as well. Other than other than this level here, which is a nice localization, there is actually nothing more than that to to tell me that we can short this area. So if you know if if really buyers wants to to push it higher, they really have an opportunity to go and and take all the shorts out and make another higher high. And that will bring us another hidden, another strong bearish divergence on a bigger time frame, and maybe that will only be, you know, the right area to spot to to short. So right now, there's other than this localization that is a nice area to short. For me, there's really not uh, not a third yeah, or I second or third condition to add it to turn really bearish. So we we can actually look at this now, where um, BTC is on the smaller pivots, getting ready to make a lower high and um, from that point onwards make a higher high on uh, a lower high and a, a higher low so it gives us a situation of a hidden bearish divergence as a continuation on the 15 minute down isn't it if you look at the lower pivots mm -hmm. if you flip to the one hour have a look at the one hour are you on the one hour i'm on the one hour so if you look at this pivot over here where we had the big turn of 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 wave that that smack in the middle of your screen well for now what is on the 15 minute days uh not even there's no maybe from this pivot here to this pivot here there is a hidden bullish divergence coming back higher and even on 15 minutes if if we close bullish on that candle there's no bearish divergence so I mean, for for the next hour for today's session, I am more interested of of this. If there's a pullback coming, long in the pullback, than shorting this kind of stuff. Oh well, if, there you have if it that makes you. sense. You know, so sense. taking a short is really risky. But if the shorts come, I will be more interested about longing this price at twenty three thousand again for for another attempt for for higher highs. Right, guys, that's all that I have to say. That's me. Lee, anything? Excited, excited with this press action. So, so finally, you know, some some movement. So we can try to uh, we can try to trade it within in the next hour. Eleven oh, eleven no o'clock. I'm not allowed to trade, trade now. It. You know, two three. I can I can action now. Cheers, everybody. So always keep hustling. Keep hustling.